There's no power in blaming everybody else for your actions or your thoughts or your feelings. So when I started taking control of my ish, that's when I started being more empowering. And that's when I started becoming aware. Um, there's a, a wise word that tells us to know thyself. Like know thyself. Understand why you feel the way you feel. Why you think the way you think. You may have to do some research. You may have to go all the way back to how you were raised. Because all of those things are, are basically a part of who you are as an adult today, how you're showing up in your marriage today. Hey, family, I'm LB, and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. All right, we have LB in the building today. <laughs> I am super excited about this conversation. LB, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me on today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I'm always up for some good girl chat. Girl, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have good, good girl chat. But before we get started, I just want to tell everybody how we come to know each other because I start off every episode that way. Okay. And I actually ran across your Instagram page when I first started A Sister's True about three years ago because, you know, I coined myself a sister coach. So when it, what drew me to your Instagram profile is because you are the wife coach. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's dope. Somebody else who's going against the grain, right, with coaching and really niching down on their specialty. And so that's what drew me to you. And so I started, you know, looking at some of your posts. I was just like, wow, she, she pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, she pretty dope. And so I saw that following you and, you know, what sealed the deal for me was when, um, Coriel came to Houston on her book tour, you know, you hosted her event yes. and that was my first time meeting you in person and you was just so cool. So down to earth. And I was just like, yeah, she's the real deal. The way she is on Instagram. <laughs> It's how she is in person. Yeah. So <laughs> what you get is exactly what you, what you see is exactly what you get. And I absolutely love that. Absolutely Thank love you. that. Oh my God. <laughs> like, you know, that dates back three years for real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause that's so when I first, in... that's when I first started. Oh my God. Well, was congratulations like, on all of your success man. for three years strong. <laughs> you know, try to do a little something. something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> So, yeah, so I invited you to this conversation, you guys, because as you know, if you've been following me for a while or, or if you have worked with me, you know my coaching style. I'm all about self-awareness, and I coach mm -hmm. from a holistic perspective. And I invited LB into the conversation because she's all about helping us, you know, wives have better marriages. Because whether you want to believe it or not, your relationship at home is going to dictate how strong or how hard you go after chasing your purpose. Yes. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it is what it is. Cause I know for me, when hubby and I are not on the same page, it's kind of hard for me to do that morning mantra for you with you guys on that Instagram morning, <laughs> on that Instagram, oh. on Instagram in the morning. That's real talk, you know? Yeah. So, but when we on the, on the good foot, Hey, I'm like walking and rolling. I can take those rejections a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? For <laughs> oh, real, yes, that is so true. <laughs> so LB is the perfect person because she gets us together on Wife Style Wednesdays, Tame Your Tongue Tuesdays. I didn't, but you know what, LB? What the oh, sometimes I gotta like skip over your your life. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, no, no, LB, not today. You know how many times you ain't get I you ain't get me together today. They bad. They be like, what? I want to sit in this for a minute. <laughs> you know, I feel you. I be feeling because I don't want to post it either. Because I talk to me. I don't be talking to y'all. I'm talking to me. Sometimes it's not not him. It's you. I be like, <laughs> <laughs> it is him. 
Oh, trust me, I understand. <laughs> so, so with that being said, perfect segue into the first question: How do we avoid being a public success but a private failure at home? Oh, how do we goodness. avoid that? Let me tell you something. I think it's so important for LB to be more of a private success than a public success in any day. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's all about understanding that you got to practice what you preach. If Mm -hmm. I'm out here telling you to tame your tongue, I'm out Mm -hmm. here telling you, okay, wait a minute, really think about how you feel and why you feel that way. And I'm not practicing those same principles. Then what's the point? I'm literally just, just blowing smoke. So I have Mm -hmm. to practice everything that I'm telling my wives. And that's why I feel it's so authentic. That's why I believe a lot of wives can connect with me because I'm telling you things that I'm doing, not did and I'm perfect. No, I am doing like, we were literally in a season of, okay, we being stretched. You know, this marriage is either going, it's going to show you that you're mature or it's going to show you areas that you need to grow up. And we were in that season and imagine me having to show up teaching wives. Okay, y'all put on a smile, just embrace it. And I couldn't do that for myself. So I really think that it's all about understanding again, being that, that principle that you're teaching. Don't just say the word, be the word. Don't just Mm -hmm. give the examples do the examples, be the example. So that's what it's all about. I have to really be, and I got to understand, I have two little girls that are watching me. Yes. So Lexi and Demi, Mm -hmm. they keep me in check because when Mm -hmm. I'm telling them, not just how I talk to my husband, it's how I talk to them. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, Tame Your Tongue Tuesdays are for the wives, but it's really how you communicate with everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, So again, it's just, just being what I'm preaching. I have to really just not speak it. I have to teach it and, and participate in it. And... One thing I've realized too, that I am the wife coach, but I'm also coachable. So mm. I always look for areas, you know what say I'm saying? That, yeah. Say that again for the people in the background. For the people I'm in the background, wife. make sure y'all hear it. I am the wife coach, <laughs> but I'm still coachable. Mm. So I never look at myself like I got it all together or, you know, there's nothing I can learn. I'm mm. always in a position of learning more. And the more I learn, the more I can teach. And if I'm doing it and people see that it's authentic, then they'll do it too. So that's what it's all about. Really being what you're saying you're, you're out here preaching. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that you say that you are coachable because a lot of us, we are in these, any type of relationship, whether or not it's your husband, you know, mother daughter relationship, friendships, especially those of us who are the strong ones. We tend yeah. to think that showing weakness or, or being vulnerable is a, is a weakness. Right. So we are not open to being coachable. We're not open to being, uh, to, to accept feedback if you will you know because we're so used to being everything for everybody and being that person that has all the answers and so it's okay to you know to step back a little bit and be on the receiving be on the receiving end absolutely and if your coach doesn't have a coach you need to run because let's start there (laughs) who are they getting their their downloads from who are they getting their you know how are they sharpening iron sharpens iron so if Mm -hmm. i'm going to sharpen my wives i got coaches behind me that are sharpening LB. Trust me. I know what I preach. Sometimes I don't want to listen to it. Sometimes <laughs> I don't want to listen to it. Really process how you feel. And I don't want to doing that right now. I'm a Gemini. So who knows what's going oh, on? Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. You got the good, good LB. You know, oh, okay. I, Kia, Kia, LB, Dairy Wife. I'm so many different people in one person, but I have to understand sometimes I receive it better from somebody else. I might be saying, they might be saying the same thing I'm saying, but because it delivered, you know, differently, I'll respond to it differently. So yeah, I got a coach. And so I'm definitely coachable. I love that. And I also, you know, love the fact that you are saying what people are not saying. Like you, you are real when you talk to us and you can tell that it comes from an authentic place. And it's nice to have somebody who's willing to say, what your friends may not say, you know, because I, I I love my I love my besties, I love my friends, I really do. But sometimes, you know, give it to me raw. Like, be honest with me. If it was if it was my fault, if I shouldn't have said that, tell me that because I need to I need to hear that. And I love the fact that you are not afraid to tell us to boo. Maybe it's you and not him. <laughs> Because sometimes, because sometimes we need to hear that. Because I know for me, sometimes I get in my feelings where mm-hmm. I, I don't even. It's just like, no, you, you, you wrong. <laughs> and it's just like, but yeah, Keisha, but then you set it up though. 
Okay. But that's it. I mean, I think just me being the mirror, like sometimes I am, I feel like I am that, that girlfriend that's going to be the realest mm -hmm. in your relationship. Yes, I want y'all to make it. I want y'all to be successful. What it takes two. He can't be causing all the problems. Let's look at some things that you maybe have done or could do differently to get a different mm -hmm. result. That's it. Right. I'm not the reason. And I always ask for permission. I'm like, can I keep it real? Like, how real can I keep it? Because if you want me to blow mm -hmm. smoke, okay, I blow smoke. Because you've been reading the fairy tales anyway. That's why you acting like that. You're, you're mad at your life <laughs> because you in here suffering from this fairy tale syndrome. Mm. And I'm trying to help you get out of that and live in reality and still be happy, still be good. So yeah, it just depends on how real you want me to get rich. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? And that goes back to self-awareness. Yes. So how does self-awareness help us to improve and strengthen our marriage? Everything I do is about self-awareness. That's why I think we click as well. That's why we can yeah. Because I always tell my wives, own your ish. Own your ish. And I'm, I'm not cursing. Issues, issues. Everybody have their, their own set of issues. And when I started really owning my ish and stopped blaming Derek, Derek, my husband, y'all, that's my boo. That's my baby. My baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> October 10th, we just celebrated 10 years. But Congratulations. I, thank you, sugar. When I stopped blaming him, because that was quick. I was quick to say, no, you getting on my nerves, or you're making me do this, or you're making me feel this way. I was giving away my power. There's no power in blaming everybody else for your actions or your thoughts or your feelings. So when I started taking control of my ish, that's when I started being more empowering. And that's when I started becoming aware. Um, there's a, a wise word that tells us to know thyself. Like know thyself. Understand why you feel the way you feel. Why you think the way you think. You may have to do some research. You may have to go all the way back to how you were raised. Because all of those things are, are basically a part of who you are as an adult today, how you're showing up in your marriage today. So being self-aware means really owning who you are, what you say, what you do. But if you don't take the time to really invest in yourself and figure out, I realized I was making a lot of, cha I'm making a lot of problems because of things that I was dealing with from my childhood. So when my father was yelling at my mama, that was still, I could still hear that as an adult. And I was like, no wonder I'm talking to my husband like this. Cause I'm feeling like I'm talking to my daddy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's owning your ish. And that's part of the self-awareness. When you start doing that, you start becoming more powerful in your relationship and your results are starting, you know, will start being different as well. I love that. And I love the fact that you are not afraid to, to share your childhood and, and what you experienced as a child, which kind of pushed you into yes. this line, this line of work. You know, hubby and I was having a conversation not too, not too long ago. And I had to break it down with him. Self-awareness is key, you guys. And I had to like break it down for him just to let him know how I was viewing the situation because I know if you guys know my story, you know that I was sexually abused by my stepfather for eight years. And so my stepfather, he was a drug addict. He didn't work. My mom worked multiple jobs, you know, to support the family, you know, and to uh, support the family and just uh, make the money that's needed when he would take and all that other good stuff. Right. And so I had to like break it down with my husband and just be like, you know what, babe, this is how I'm viewing it. Because as a child, this is what I saw my stepfather doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you're my stepfather. Right. That's not what I'm saying, but I just want you to understand my mindset and how I'm viewing this situation. So it doesn't like spill over into some big humongous unnecessary argument. And we right. was able to really like just sit down and just like, and just like talk. That yeah. was my way of being vulnerable. That was my way of owning my ish. Yeah. It wasn't It wasn't like I was just saying it because I want him to feel sorry for me, but just to get him to understand, Absolutely. right? Because cause we don't like talk to our mates like we should, mm -hmm. you know, on that real deep level, like it's okay to be vulnerable, right? So now he knows, you know, um, if he act a certain way or do a certain thing, like he knows what the triggers are or whatever. And that's also another reason, something else for me to work on. Yeah. That's something else that I need to talk about in therapy. Therapy is an ongoing thing, you guys. <laughs> yeah, good, because again, we both come from two different backgrounds. We have our own experiences, yeah. our own struggles, our own successes. And then we come together to become one. That's a whole lot of mess coming together under one roof. If you haven't dealt with it, especially half the things we didn't deal with. Um, so when I didn't understand the power of taming your tongue is because I saw my parents arguing, fussing, and cussing all the time. 
So now I'm in my own relationship. I want a healthy relationship. I want it to work. Well, it ain't going to work if you don't know how to, you know what I mean, put a muzzle on your mouth. And I'm not saying you don't have a voice. It's knowing how to use your voice in your marriage. Just like you sat down with your husband and articulated, these are the triggers. This is where this is coming from. This is my perspective. If you can't do that because you're so caught up in your feelings and you mad and can't, you know, really detect the problem from the feeling, you know, we have to understand that. That's part of knowing who we are. When I started saying I'm getting angry, okay, the words that are coming out of my mouth right now, where are they coming from? Because mm -hmm. it's really not dairy. Mm -hmm. It really, Thomas, like it really, because I, I was defenseless as a child. Now I'm ready to fight because I'm older. I'm like, nah, I ain't no punk. But nah, boo, he ain't your daddy. Like he ain't coming at you like that. Why are you taking it out on him? Until I understood that, we were going to have some issues and continue to have issues that I'm not sure we would have made it as husband and wife 10 years and count. Okay, so when I started really, again, I'm taking awareness, like you said, being aware and being self, um, I guess just being self-aware of how I was talking, how I was moving in my marriage, that's when I started tapping into the real power. Yeah, I love that. And one of your iconic teachings, <laughs> since we're talking about power, <laughs> is that there's power in the peace. <laughs> Take a sip. That's right. Take a sip. <laughs> so for us wives and wives to be, I need you to break that down. Break down what it means to have the power, that, that, that we have power in the P. Yes. What does that P stand lady. for? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I don't know where your mind just went, <laughs> but that P is your position. Mm -hmm. And it's power in the other P too. But I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. In this case, because the good word tells us what? That a man that finds a wife finds, finds a, good a good thing. Okay. And so that means you are powerful. Like if you think about some of the most, um, I guess, encouraging or inspirational quotes about husbands and wives, the wife plays a very vital part in that relationship. Like it's just amazing the power that God has given us. But what happens is when you don't know your power, you are operating as a married woman. And that's why I always say that all married women aren't wives. Just because you have a ring on your finger doesn't make you a wife. Some people are more focused on getting married Having that beautiful wedding day that's all about them. Oh, I want to get married. I want to have the wet, oh, five dress changes. I want to have, you know, 200 guests. All that. They, that's all they're concerned with. Not realizing that you're a bride for one day and a wife for the rest of your life. So when I say tap into the power of the P, it's really understanding that you have to choose which woman you're going to show up as in your relationship. The wife mm -hmm. understands how to tame her tongue. The wife understands that me yelling and cussing and fussing to get my point across is not the best way to communicate my issues with my husband. Um, the wife understands that, okay, I need to affirm my man with my words. If death and life are in the power of the tongue, why am I constantly speaking death to him, expecting him to bring me life? You see that? Like, how am I expecting love from this man, but I'm constantly tearing him down? I'm emasculating him. I won't let him be the man. I'm Mrs. Controller. I'm Mrs. Nagging. So you got to understand that. There's power in both positions now. Don't get me wrong. There's power in being a married woman and being a wife, but I promise you the results of being a wife is so much more enjoyable than being that of a married woman. So that's what, it, what I mean by tapping into the power of the peace. It's understanding your position as a wife and the power that you hold in your marriage. You know, it takes maturity to understand your position in a marriage and to just let the man be the man. Yes. It takes maturity. You know, my husband, when we were dating, he, he broke up with me <laughs> when we were dating mm -hmm. because he said that he felt as though that I treated him as if he was an accessory. Yes. I, he was, you know, the, the completion of my outfit for the day. Yep. And the reason why that, that hit me the way that it did is because the guy that I was dating before him said something similar. And so that made me take a look in the mirror because what's the, what's the commonality between these two guys? Hey. Self-awareness. Look. <laughs> That's me. So oh even God. though I, you know, I'm an independent woman and yes, I can do all this and I make my own money, have my own yeah. house and all this other stuff. My husband, boyfriend at the time, now he's my husband, was like, okay, so, but how do I fit into all this? Right. How do I fit in? You know, because you say you want a man, but you ain't even letting me be the man coming into this relationship. And I had to like mature up for a second because I'm like, okay, if I really want to be married, yes. if I want to, you know, get down the aisle 
at right. that time, not necessarily with him, but with anybody, because this is the second man that has yes. told me this, mm-hmm. you know, what is this pattern, you know, and it took me looking, doing some self-reflection and just really like looking into the mirror. And that, yeah. you know, um, reminds me of a conversation that Fantasia had on the Breakfast Club. Did you see? Yes, that about submission. About submission. Yes. You know, people was in an uproar. People Why? Uproar. I, because of the whole submission thing. It, that comes from not understanding what submission is. And, and I totally understand because there have been several examples prior to us, cultures that have the man being dominant um, over the woman or the woman not having a, a, a say so, or, you know what I'm saying? Not having a voice in her marriage. So I totally understand how people look at submission in a negative, cause it's a negative connotation. But when you really understand the power in submission, you eliminate the power struggle in your relationship. Like, why am I not realizing that my husband is the head, but I'm the neck? Why am I not looking at submission as a partner dancing where one leads, one follows? Like if you really look at submission in a different, you know, I guess perspective, you'll see that there's, like her husband was saying, it's a gift to your marriage. And I I submit and my husband submits. You don't see me walking around here like no punk though. Like I, I understand what it means. So I think that's what it is. Once people understand what submission is and what it's not, they can appreciate it for what it is. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. You know, it's it's the it's the submission part that people have a have a problem with, and then it's also the obey that comes up in in the vows. Because I had friends who took that part out. I didn't. <laughs> I left it. I left it. I left it in my vows. Uh-huh. I said it, and when I said it, I meant it. But that was because it was broken down to me in the right way and to understand mm-hmm. you know like my husband is supposed to love me and treat me the same way that god so loved the church yes. so if he's if, if i'm obeying god why wouldn't i obey my husband if he's treating me in that exact same way now the bible don't say <laughs> that if he's got you upside your head or whatever exactly. come on now he has to love exactly. you in the same way that the that the Lord loves the church, right? Mm-hmm. So I didn't, once it was broken down to me and I understood, because that's the thing, the negative connotations that people don't seek understanding for themselves. But once I saw yes. understanding for myself, I didn't have a problem with saying, I will obey. Yes. I didn't have a problem with that. Absolutely. And, and it goes both ways. Like, I'm sure it's equal. Like, I know it is. <laughs> because there are times where I am honestly, I'm not going to be, I'm leading this marriage, but I am in a position of leadership. And my husband's like, okay, baby, I'm learning from you. And vice versa, but I'm still gonna let my man be the man. I'ma still let him feel like he's the head of my household because there's order in everything that we do. And we sometimes don't understand that order. It's God, your husband, yourself, and your cheering. Many of us are putting our kids before our husband. And you wanna know why we out of order. You wanna understand why things ain't working out the way they're supposed to. Because we don't understand the power in, in God creating order. So the things can work out and, and operate in a in a beautiful fashion. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, so yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely know. I absolutely know what you're saying. So because when I heard that interview with her, I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be some backlash mm-hmm. after this one. Mm-hmm. Because I completely understood what she was saying. But then and then it also goes back to, you know, how comfortable are you are with yourself? Yes. You know, like, do you have some issues that you need to deal with? Are you self-conscious about something? Yeah. Because what, what is, what is the problem? <laughs> what is the problem? Who are you dating? Like, who are you tied to? Who are you married to? <laughs> no, that's good. That is good. Because if you are with someone that you can't see yourself obeying, that you can't see yourself submitting to, then what you doing, boo? Don't get married to them. If I couldn't see myself submitting under the leadership of my husband, then I, this will be a power struggle. We will be bumping heads every single day because I want to be in control. Mm-hmm. That's what a married woman does, y'all. That's why you got to tap into the power of peace. A wife understands that there is order. A married woman like, nah, boo, you ain't no head. I'm the head. We're going to fight against this. We're going to fight for this position. No, y'all on the same team. But mm-hmm. it takes wisdom and understanding so that things can function the way they are designed or created to. So... Absolutely. I'm all for submission. If we need to change the name, change it. If you look it up, you will realize that it's simply yielding. Submission mm. means to yield. To some, you submit to the traffic light. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah, praise Y'all can go ahead and pass that collection plate, cash app. I'm just saying. <laughs> you submit to everything in life. Like you really got to look at your Oh, life. my God. Girl, I know you did. We submit to the 
the to the traffic light. Yes, I love it. Do. Think about it. You know what I mean? Like, ain't nobody telling us, you know, if you don't stop, what's going to happen? You're going to have a car accident. Somebody going to get a ticket. Something's going to happen. You submit to, I mean, this may not be a great example for these officers. I mean, not in this day and time. Some people don't. Yeah. But as far yeah. as the position, the authority, a judge, if you go to court, you ain't submitting, you're going you gonna to go off at, at the mouth so you can be in contempt of court. Like, come on, y'all. We do this. But when it comes to the man that we're going to share the rest of our life with, we come to our spouse. Why can't we? submit to their God-given position in our lives. So yeah, if you can't do it, don't, don't get married. If you know you're with somebody and you cannot see yourself submitting, you need to reassess yourself <laughs> and then figure out what is your, your issue with submission. Mm -hmm. Where does it come from? Going all the way back to owning your ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. And to be completely honest with you, just to, to, to have a man that's supposed to be the head of the household, I, to be real talk, it was like it was a weight lifted off my shoulder. Do you know how much weight I have been holding <laughs> up <laughs> until the yeah, yeah until the day I, yeah until the day I married my husband? So uh -huh. the time that I had a man come in who was you know gonna take that weight off my shoulders, I was like, yes, lead. <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. Yes. Go yes. ahead, lead. <laughs> Okay, where we going? I'm, tired of, I'm tired of making decisions. Where are we going? What are we doing? I'm, I'm tired of being everything to everybody because mm -hmm. my mama told me, and, I, and you know, my mother did the best that she could because mm -hmm. of her relationship, but she taught me to honestly, I won't need a man. Like she was teaching me how to be so independent that you don't need nobody. And I'm like, I mean, that's all good and dandy, but I need my husband, y'all. I'm just going to be honest. Like I ain't going to be like, I don't need him. I want him. No, I need him. Because I got two cheering. I got a life that's connected to his. We need each other on this journey. And so if we don't understand how to um, yield or submit to each other on this journey, we're going to have a hard time on this path to happily ever after. Absolutely. What's the, what's the <clears throat> common challenge that you come across with the wives that you coach that a lot of us are facing? I would have to say there's so many. But I mm. think, honestly, it starts with your perception of marriage. So I think a lot of women mm. suffer from this fairy tale syndrome, like a lot of women. And again, it goes back to who taught you about marriage? Where do you get your examples from? Because we're seeing marriage as this fantasy, like, oh, my God, he's going to be my knight in shining armor. He's going to, you know, make me feel so happy. I'm going to see him and just smile every day. Life is going to be good. We're going to have money. We're going to take trips. Hashtag relationship goals. And then when your life doesn't paint that picture, you're disappointed. You're like, oh, no, I got to get a divorce. I got to throw the towel in. This is not what I signed up for. Oh, yes, you did. That's called marriage. Welcome to marriage. So I think that's what it is. A lot of women are suffering from the, the fairy tale syndrome. This is actually the first week lesson in my six week uh, masterclass. This okay. Is what we start with we start with the mindset because everything starts with your mind. I know you know that. Mm. Everything starts with your mind. So let's figure out where this marriage mindset came from. Why do you think marriage is a fair? Or how are you suffering from the fairy tale syndrome? What are some expectations that you're setting on your man that are unrealistic? What are some expectations that you're setting on this whole thing called marriage? That a, dude, that was in a movie. That was in Brown Sugar. You saw that in Brown Sugar. Uh-uh, you saw that in Love Jones. Where you get that from? That's on the notebook. Like, we are really, <laughs> we don't realize it, but when we're watching these um, Disney movies, when we're doing this as kids, it's really setting inside of us what that is supposed to look like. We're really thinking this is life. And then when it doesn't happen, we're disappointed. So I think that starts. Um, with the fairy tale syndrome, definitely helping them to uproot that and create a more realistic version of mar what marriage can be in real life. And that's why I love following you because you share a lot of, you know, the relationship with you and your husband. Yes. So we can understand what marriage really looks like, you know, because mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know about you, you know, your parents were married. My mom wasn't married to my stepfather for okay. a long time. So back in the day, people just really shacked up. I mean, they stayed together for long periods of time, but they yeah. really kind of like shacked up. So I didn't really have, you know, an idea of what marriage was at all. Right. But my husband's parents are still married. And it's like, my husband had that fairy tale syndrome. Mm. But I, my mother-in-law, She's a, you know, a at home wife. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, stayed at home. She took care of my husband and his sister. Mm -hmm. You know, the dad went out and, and worked and made the money and stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. 
you know, she was the wife that cleaned the house, had the food together, and served my father-in-law on the silver platter. So my husband came into the relationship thinking that I would do the same thing. And yeah. so my thing was, okay, so check this out, boo. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> Take a sip. <laughs> Your mom doesn't work. I yeah. work. You cannot expect me to work 40 hours a week and still come home and serve you on the silver platter, boo-boo. Mm-hmm. Now, if you put me in the country on some land like your daddy did, I would have your babies. Yes, the house would be clean. Yeah. And yes, I would serve you on a silver platter. But you cannot expect me to do the yeah. same. Like, like we really had to battle that before we got married, you know, and just come to some type of, of compromise because he's come... He's coming from, from that situation. I'm mm-hmm. coming from a situation where my mom worked 50, 11 jobs, you know, supporting, and the man was taken from the household. My husband come from a, a household where the man was putting in. I mean, we, it was, man, it yeah. was a battle. It was a battle because it was just like, it wasn't that I was just trying to like break it down, you know, break him down and, and crush his dreams. I just wanted him to be realistic. Yes. And you're right. I'm so happy you said that because there are some men who suffer from the fairy tale syndrome too. I'm so happy you pointed that out. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it takes coming to the table. Let's put our ish on the table mm-hmm. and we need to figure out, yes, that was your example of marriage. Yes. This was my non example of marriage. How are we going to make this thing work for us? Because my parents were married for 20 years before they divorced. But I remember marriage being contentious. I remember marriage being abusive verbally, physically. Mm -hmm. I remember them cussing and fussing. I remember being outside and the the screen from the window coming out, like being popped out of the window. Mm -hmm. And I'm outside with my friends. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And they're fighting. Like that, that was my visual of marriage. So I'm bringing this to the table. Do I want to experience this in my marriage? Absolutely not. But we need to talk about what we want marriage to look like for us. That could have been my uh, syndrome. I could have been holding on to the negative examples of marriage, thinking that, okay, marriage ain't for you. You just can't get married because that's what it's going to look like. And that's not the case. So helping my women and what, real, what they realize is not necessarily it's about, um, you know, having the, the white picket fence and the, the two and a half kids and all that stuff. Like, it's not really that fairy tale syndrome. It's, I thought he was going to be my everything. Yeah. Like th- that's the kind of, that's a syndrome. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. really think your husband's supposed to be your everything? Why are you putting that pressure on him, boo thing? He mm-hmm. may not be your BFF. That's why you got mm-hmm. Karen down the street. That's Karen's job to be your BFF. He don't want to hear about what happened at the nail salon. Go tell her. Mm-hmm. See, things like that, we don't really realize. Like, we're like, oh my God, I married my best friend and we're going to do everything together. And no, boo, he an individual, you're an individual. Y'all are husband and wife. Y'all can be the best of friends. If y'all are BFFs, that's cool. But don't put that pressure on each other to be everything to everybody. You can't. It's just not, it's not realistic. So that's part of the fairy tale syndrome, too. Even with me, I had to be very, very cautious too, because like I, you know, like I said earlier, you know, once I made my husband decided to, you know, to make our relationship serious, you mm-hmm. know, it was just like, yes, you know, somebody else that can, that can take the lead, you know, I still had to find harmony and balance in that because my strength is what drew him to me. Yes. So yes, I want him to, you know, to come in and, you know, be the strong man that I need him to be, you know, and take the lead, but I can't lose, lose sense of who I am and how strong I am. Yeah. Right. So I still need to like pull my weight and like that too, you know, because growing up seeing my mom, like hustle and grind to uh-huh. no end, mm-hmm. I was just like, man, what? I am not trying to do that in a minute. Exactly. But I, but I, but I have to, we, we, our grinds have to match. Yes. That's good. You know, our grinds have to match. So that was just something that I have to be cognizant about all the time, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And uh, man, yeah, that's just, yeah. I'm gonna have to go talk to my husband after this too. <laughs> uh, and clear up some air. See, that's why, that's why I like talking to you. Like hear you, hear you speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> understanding See, that's it. it's constantly that's why i always feel that we are never at a level where we we made it like we're constantly growing we're constantly evolving and like i said marriage will mature you or expose the immaturity in you 
And I learned this year, after almost nine years of marriage, that there were still some areas that LB needs to grow the heck up. And that's it. It just puts it in your face. Now, either you go on woman up and, and make, you know, meet the challenge, or you're just going to stay right where you are and just be frustrated and mad and pissed off and angry and walking around with an attitude. It's your choice. So who you going to be? The married woman or that wife? Or that way. And I love that you bring up evolution because you have involved a lot in within your marriage. Cause when you, cause when you first started out, you were a teacher. Yes. And then you evolved into the wife coach after you got married. Yes. Walk yes. us, walk us through that. Cause you talked about on social media, like a while ago on how you had to go to your husband because your husband has always been an entrepreneur. Yes. Right. And so you had to go to him and talk to him and yeah, yes. walk us through that it as like oh they're two entrepreneurs let me tell you something lb was not an entrepreneur when i first met Derek. um my husband didn't marry an entrepreneur i became one so that means there was a transition um that happened in our marriage i'm leaving this quote-unquote stable job with some good benefits um to go follow the unknown to say oh i want to write a book and i want to follow my dream you know what i mean and husband's like he could have been like wait a minute what you want to do what but i had that support and I think that was so important that we were in a position where, one, our marriage was very new, um, but we had been communicating. We'd been through premarital education and training for almost a year. So, like, that foundation was, was solid. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had a really strong foundation to begin to build our marriage on. So when I came to him and said I wanted to transition, um, I had already done the work on myself prior to. And what do I mean by that? I started asking myself, okay, what is this going to look like? If I'm leaving my nine to five, then how is the money going to be? How, how do I need my husband to support me? Is it just financially? Is it spiritually? Is it emotionally? Like, what do I need? So when I came to Derek with that, he could see that I was serious. Not just like, hey, I think I just want to go quit my job and write a book. I had a plan in place. Somewhat of a plan. Uh, it wasn't all the way together. But it was like, hey, I'm going to need your help. And my husband has always believed in me. He's always believed in me as being a writer. And he was like, you know what, do it. My, always, my husband always says, run it, like just do it. And so when I told him I wanted to do it, I had his support, but he also prepared me for the road ahead. Cause he like, look, I know you got all these dreams. I know you done made your vision board and you're excited about all that stuff on it, but it ain't gonna happen like overnight. Like he told me it takes 15 years to become an overnight success story. And mm. when he told me that, I, I wanted to cuss him out. Say that again for the people in the background. It takes 15 years to become an overnight success story. Like those words came out of my husband's mouth. And I was like, what? You don't know what kind of life I got? I'm not telling you. I'm being bike coach tomorrow. What are you telling me? Hold on. How you going to tell me it's going to take 15 years? Shoot. You don't know what you're talking about. I was so pissed. I was so mad. But when I tell you, let me see. Okay, that was 2010. It's 2019. Okay, maybe you know what he's talking about. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, I gotta go tell him he knew. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I had to grow through this process, and my husband was there, you know, walking with me along the journey. And so I thank God for that transition because he could have been a husband that said, I ain't signed up for this. We we got a good, stable, you know, salary. You're walking into the unknown. We don't know what's gonna happen in that on that journey. But he wasn't that person. He was the one that said, Let's do this, but be realistic on how you're gonna get these results over the next couple of years. So it was a good transition. I'm so thankful that he's still on this journey with me um, and seeing the manifestation of the work that I've been putting in over the years. Mm -hmm. I love... <laughs> Girl, you are so funny. You guys go out to watch the video because I'm over here cracking. I'm over here cracking up. But um, I love that. I love the fact that you put together a plan first. Like yeah. you worked it out with yourself first and then presented it to the husband. I think that's probably, in my opinion, that's probably what made it a little easier for him to accept it because yeah. he saw that you were serious about it, mm -hmm. right? So, and because even with me, my husband, he's not an entrepreneur. He doesn't want to be an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. That's totally not his thing at all whatsoever. We are complete opposite in every <laughs> sense of the word. But the hustle and the grind, man, he sees it and he's okay with it. Because it, it has been times where I'm just like, baby. So what had happened was... Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I had to like, you know, hire this web designer and he was like, okay, well, how much did that cost? Girl, I couldn't even tell him because they cost that much. I, I just had to like put my head down and he was just like, he was just like, you know what, babe, I see how hard you're working. And if you think that this is what you need, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. so be it. He was like, I'm not at the point where 
it's just too much. You pouring yeah. into the business is, is too much. I'm not at that point yet. So go for it. Because he see the grind and he see the hustle. He see how serious I am, yeah. you know, about my business. My, my ticket out the door was a published book. So if I'm talking about, I want to, you know, get out here and share our love story and help women to create their picture perfect marriage based on a whole lot of imperfections, then you have to write the book. So literally I'm at school during my planning time, writing. Um, and when I came home, I was writing. When I got up in the morning, I would go run. Then I'd come home and write. My husband saw that. So he knew that I wasn't just, you know, oh, okay, I made a vision board and I got dreams. I was putting action behind that dream. So I think that, like you said, that's what helped convince him. Like, okay, I see she not just out here blowing smoke. She really out here putting in the work. So, mm -hmm. and when that book finally released and my husband was like, my baby wrote a book. Like you really wrote like a 160 page book. Like you wrote a book. <laughs> that's when he was like, oh yeah, let's do this. My husband, he's a, he's the hustler. I had uh -huh. to learn to become a hustler. Yeah. You know, the my whole day I get paid on the 15th and the 30th. You know, I ain't gonna hustle nothing. Just some <laughs> but now I gotta hustle these books. He had to teach me how to do that. And so when I started selling my books, it was like from there the path started paving. And I started getting booked for different gigs and things like that. Just slowly but surely, but nine years later, I see how it all worked out. But I had his support and, and it was it was a beautiful thing and it still is. I love it. Great segue. So give us a recommendation of a, of a book that changed, changed your life or impacted your marriage. Okay. Hands down. Y'all yeah. got to go get this today. I'm today. Like, Amazon Prime. It's by Florence Sobel Shin. It's called The Game of Life and How to Play It. Mm. Okay, bomb. I mean, bomb. I will read that book today. I've read it like 15 times. I can read that book today and I'm going to find something different about myself today. Mm. I've read that book 15 times. That's how profound it's like a it's like a Bible, literally scripture aligned to, you know how we say write the vision, make it plain. It, mm -hmm. it has that in there. Then it talks about vision boards. It just makes everything connect. Um, so it's like a spiritual uh connection to the book, but then it's also real life. It's just the the game book. Like when I say the game book of life, you want this. So it's the game of life and how to play it by Florence Scoble Shin. Mm, I'm about to check that. I'm about to check that it's one good. out. So good. I wonder if it's on Audible. It might be, but it's bomb. It's, it's bomb. Life changer. I'm about to check that out. Okay. And last question: When describing the meaning of living your truth, what is the third word when you hear this phrase? I'm give you two words. You tell me what the third word is. When you hear self awareness, purpose, and gratitude. Ooh gratitude yes. and i've learned that when you develop an attitude of gratitude life just starts to give you more things and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. that you need more it's just being content and appreciative of the things you have now mm -hmm. so a, an attitude of gratitude has helped me to really just be humble to help me to understand in 2009 2010 when i first started this thing um and my husband was like it's gonna take you 15 years to open that shit store when he said that and now 2019 almost 2020 i mean 20 you know in 2019 yeah. almost 2020 i get it so it's an attitude of gratitude that has definitely helped me to remain true i love that you are amazing I love you. I love you. This was amazing. Thank you so much for showing up and just being true to who you are, because I know we have helped some wives on today yes. in their relationships, because the relationship is so important for creating that rock solid foundation that we need in order to chase our purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.